All right, y'all, here's part two uh, for today. Uh, so we're going to go over standard 10.2 right now, which is I'll be able to make calculations for wavelength, frequency, and energy of electromagnetic waves. In other words, so we've learned a lot of this kind of abstract conceptual stuff about electromagnetic waves, what they are, their relative size, frequency, kind of their properties, uh, what they do, why they're important, right? How we can use them as a society. Um, but what we're going to get into now is, is how can we actually calculate or quantify uh, these properties. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at the wavelength, the frequency, and the energy uh, contained by a wave, right? Uh, of, of a, you know, anything across the spectrum. So I've got some practice problems for you guys here. I've got these equations and these constants and some conversion factors. These are not things you guys will have to memorize. You guys will always have those kind of for you. Um, the equations are pretty easy to memorize, so you could certainly do that. Um, but you'll have the constants and the conversions provided. So I've got five problems for you guys uh, to kind of go through. Uh, dealing with different uh, different frequencies of uh, electromagnetic radiation. I'm going to go through these first couple um, for you guys uh, as kind of a tutorial. And then I would like you guys, of course, to still write those down, go along with them in your notes, and or in your final sheet that you're going to turn in. And then uh, I've got three that I would like you guys to try uh, kind of on your own. All right, and then I'm going to post the answer key tomorrow. So one important thing here, is that I want you guys to do these price problems on a separate sheet of paper, okay? I don't want you guys to try and do them on here. Write them down, pencil to paper. And then uh, you don't have to write the questions down. Just go through your work, go through the steps, practice it, and then take a picture and send that to me. And that's the piece that I actually want to see. So I've gone ahead and I've copied uh, those other questions one and two over here. And that's where I'm going to be working. And here are the two big equations that we, that we have that we're working with uh, that we need to be aware of. Number one is kind of our, our general wave equation. Right, which is the speed of a wave is equal to its wavelength times its frequency. Right now, the speed of a electromagnetic wave we know, of course, is the speed of light. Right, which is three hundred thousand meters per second, or three times ten to the eight meters per second. Right, so that's how far it travels every second. That's the speed of light in a vacuum or in space, uh, which is what we're going to be using for these calculations. Uh, this little uh, weird thing like this—that's a Greek letter lambda, lowercase lambda—that represents wavelength. Okay, and that is going to be in meters per second. Okay, so anytime that we're using this equation, our wavelength needs to be in meters. So as I say meters per second, it just needs to be in meters. Okay, so, and then last we have frequency. Uh, and frequency is represented just kind of with an F, and it's measured in hertz, right? That's the number of uh, wave kind of crests that we get per second, right? So a hertz is actually, if I were to write in, the, write in what a hertz is, a hertz is uh, one over uh, a second. Right, so that's actually what a hertz is, um, if you didn't know. Right, so thinking about it, if we have wavelength in meters multiplied by frequency in hertz, which is one over seconds, we end up with meters per second. So it kind of makes sense that way. Um, so that's one big equation that links those three things. Uh, so if we have the wavelength, right, we know the speed of light, we can find the frequency. Easy enough. Uh, the second big equation that we have is the energy kind of equation for a wave. Now, this says that the energy in joules, right? all energy is measured in joules, so the energy in joules of a wave is equal to, of an electromagnetic wave, it's equal to Planck's constant, represented by this H. And that's just a constant, it's unchanging, just like the speed of light, it's a constant, right? Uh, its units are joules times seconds, and it's this little, little tiny number, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds, right? That is incredibly small. It is a very, 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 very small number, but it represents kind of, it's a quantum number, represents the scale or, or kind of quanta of energy. Okay, so the energy of a electromagnetic wave varies with the frequency at a rate that's equal to this kind of, this stepping increment, which is called Planck's constant, right? So it can't really, um, so it's kind of tied to this little stepping in increment, this kind of quanta, this little bundle or packet or amount of energy that we can have. So the total energy of a wave is equal to this number of Planck's constant times the frequency, okay? So if we have the energy, I can find the frequency or vice versa. Um, and that's that. So let's go ahead and dive on in. Uh, in this first problem, we have New Orleans Public Radio, 89.9 WWNO. Okay, so radio waves, these frequency of these radio waves, the number on the dial for FM, right? That represents the frequency in megahertz, right? Uh, and so we want to calculate the wavelength of these radio waves. Now, one thing, one thing to note is, is we can write this in here is that one uh, megahertz is equal to 
and sixth. All right, so that's our that's our conversion factor that we're going to be using uh, for there. So that is an important thing to make note of. And we're going to calculate the wavelength of these radio waves. Okay, so uh, we are going to use our C equals uh, the wavelength times the frequency formula. And we know the speed of light and we know the uh, we know the frequency so we can find the wavelength. So uh, with a lot of these numbers, one thing I'm going to do and you guys will see me work on with this is I'm going to rearrange this to solve for the wavelength before I start plugging in numbers. And that's because the numbers I'm going to be working with are going to be in a lot of these cases, they're going to be pretty big. Okay, so I'm going to start by dividing both sides by frequency. Right. That means that these frequencies cancel over here. And I'm left with uh, just this equation, right? The wavelength is equal to uh, the speed of light divided by the frequency. Okay, easy enough. Uh, well, the speed of light, right? We already know that one. The speed of light happens to be 300,000. Sorry, 300 million, my bad, not 300,000 meters per second. And then the frequency, we actually have to convert because we need to have that frequency in hertz, right? But I, meanwhile, have this frequency in megahertz, right? So how do we get from these megahertz to hertz? Well, there we need to do a dimensional analysis, okay? So I know that I have 89, let me just type this up. So I have 89.9 megahertz. And I could write that as over one. And I need to multiply that by my conversion factor. Now, whenever I'm doing this dimensional analysis, I know that I want my megahertz on bottom and my hertz on top. So I know that there is one uh, megahertz is equal to uh, 10 sixth hertz. And that's my conversion factor. And once again, the reason why I have this guy on at the top and this guy on the bottom is because then these megahertz got one on top, one on the bottom, they cancel. And the units I'm left with are hertz, right? So this actually ends up giving me, if I were to type that in my calculator and, and figure that out, right? I could take my 89.9, multiply by 10 to the sixth power. And I get this number here, right? So this gives me, oops, give me eight, nine, three, four, uh, six. Okay. So that's what I end up with. Now, means that I can go ahead and plug that in down here, right? And then if I go ahead and calculate this out, Right, then I can go ahead and find uh, what I end up with. So I'm just going to divide this using my calculator. I'm going to go ahead and take um, three and divide by 89. Boom, and lo and behold, what do I get? 3.37. We'll just round it to that there. Right, so I end up with three point three, seven, and we're gonna be my units for wavelength, so it's gonna end up being meters, right? Now, uh, does that answer end up making sense, right? Based off of what we, what we know? Well, we know that we're dealing with a radio wave here, okay? And radio waves, 3.37 meters, that's like 10-ish feet, right? A little over 10 feet. So is that a relatively like reasonable size for a radio wave? And yeah, it sure is, right? So we're solid there, check and check, All right? So now, right, the second question that we have here is we have, we wanna calculate the energy of these radio waves. So here we're gonna need this second equation, right? V equals HF. So we'll have energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. Right, 
Uh, now, once again, we know the frequency. We already actually converted it to Hertz. So we know the frequency in Hertz uh, and we know what Planck's constant is. So this one's actually pretty straightforward. We can just plug these numbers uh, right on in. So that's equal to, uh, let's see, we have here 10, or sorry, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. And we're going to multiply that by our frequency, which was 89. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Pretty straightforward. All right now, I could type this in my calculator and see what I end up getting, but I'm going to tell you guys right now it's going to be a uh, typically uh, it'll end up being kind of a crazy number. Uh, sometimes it'll it'll make a little bit more sense, but in in my case, I know at least it ends up being a pretty crazy like big long decimal, right? And so one thing that I can do is I'm actually going to go ahead and convert this into scientific notation, right? So if I move this decimal place over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places, right? Then what I end up with is I end up with eight point nine times ten to the seventh. Right. Ten to the seventh power. Now, if you guys remember something from uh, scientific notation when we have this. Uh, anytime that we're multiplying things that are in base 10, these first two numbers here, right, I just multiply like normal, and the exponents I end up adding. Right, so what I'm going to end up getting here is I'm going to get 6.626 times 8.9. It's a 6.626 times 8.9. And that gives me 58.97. Right, so I get 58.97, right, and then that's going to be times 10 to, all right, well, these guys I need to add. So negative 34 plus uh, 7 ends up being negative uh, 20, wait for it, negative 27, right? Now, I could simplify this a little bit further, right? And then I could move this decimal over one more, right? Um, in which case, it would be 5.897 times 10 to the, mm, wait a second, so I'd be moving it over. So times 10 to the negative 26th, right? Um, but I'm also fine if we, if we keep it like this. So the, and then the final units for this would be, of course, would be in joules, right? So there is that right there. The thing to mention is that with this, this is a very small amount of energy, you'll notice, but that also makes sense because what we've talked about with radio waves, they don't have a lot of energy, right? They're low energy wavelengths. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with this, though, is that it's this is not just like the energy, you know, it's not like there's just one radio wave. It's like they're continually being broadcast, right? All the time at a relatively high frequency. So it's like there is a decent amount of energy that is going out there even though each wave itself doesn't necessarily have a lot of energy. Um, moving on to question number two, if we look at this one, this one's talking about a microwave. Right? So the energy of one microwave in a microwave is about 1.62 times 10 to the negative 24th joules. Right? Uh, like we mentioned, it's more than one wave. Uh, there's so many, and, and there's so many of these waves that are going out per second, and we could actually figure out the amount of energy that's living per second using the wattage, uh, but that's not what we're doing in this problem. And instead, we're going to use this energy to calculate the frequency of the microwaves in the oven. Right, so let's go ahead and start in this case. We know that we have the energy, right? uh, and we're trying to find the frequency. So what's gonna tie those two together? Well, in this case, we're gonna use our energy equation, right? Where energy is equal to uh, Planck's constant times the frequency, right? Uh, and once again, I'll probably rearrange this. So we have the energy, we have Planck's constant. So I'm gonna try and solve for the frequency here. So I'm gonna divide both sides by Planck's constant. Right over here, those cancel, and I get that the frequency right, ends up being equal to the energy right, divided by Planck's constant. 
and I can go ahead and start plugging those in, all right? My energy is already in the unit that we need. It's in joules, right? And we have Planck's constant. So let's go ahead and the energy is 1.62 times 10 to the negative 24th. We're going to go ahead and divide that by Planck's constant, which is 6.66 times 10 to the negative 34th. Now, um, if you recall, when we're actually uh, dividing uh, numbers that are in scientific notation like this, uh, with these front two, as I mentioned, we uh, just divide those like normal. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take 1.62 and divide that by 6.26, or 6. Oh, 6.626, and I end up with 0. 0.244, right? So this is going to equal point, or we'll say 0. 0.244 times 10 to the, uh -huh. uh, so now here, right, um, here we have uh, 10 to the negative 24th and 10 to the negative 34th down here. So when we have this kind of a situation, we have them in the denominator, we subtract them. So negative 24 minus negative 34, right, gives us positive 10, right, 10 to the 10th. Now, what would the units end up being for this? Well, we're working with frequency, right? Our energy was in joules. Planck's constant was in joules times seconds. And so what our frequency ends up being in the units for this would end up being in hertz, right? our main unit for frequency. So that's what we end up with. Now, could I rearrange this? Yeah, I most certainly could. Um, one thing I could change this is I could move this over one. Right, and I could actually write this as another option uh, would be to write this as 2, 2.44 times 10 to the ninth, right? Um, which would be, if we remember here, 10 to the ninth is a gigahertz. So this would actually end up being 2.44 gigahertz. Uh, I could also rewrite this as uh, 2, 4, 4, 0, 2,440 times 10 to the 6th. Uh, and 10 to the 6th hertz, if we recall over here, is a megahertz, right? So this would actually end up just being 2,440 megahertz, right? Now, one thing that's cool is you guys can actually end up checking this um if you so choose you guys could look at this and i, I kind of linked uh, to this in, in the document but i actually took a picture of my microwave and you can do the same for yours just inside the door please pardon how dirty my microwave is um but it's just inside the door here right on this panel you should see a little spot where it actually has the frequency of your microwave where the microwaves are being produced right by the magnetron in there so mine are 2450 in mine yours should be pretty similar right We're pretty darn close to what to what we actually got here Right, so that's what the actual frequency is of those waves that are being produced by the by your microwave oven. Now the last piece is to calculate the wavelength of the microwaves. Uh, now one thing I'd like you guys to try is pause the video. See if you can actually do this part by yourself. Um, I guess you should pause the video now, not before. But see if you can do this part by yourself and then and then follow along and see if you actually get it right. See what happens. So here's, uh, we're trying to find a wavelength here, right? So I know that, uh, I'm gonna use my equation, speed of light is equal to the wavelength. Oh man, that's a really bad lambda, do yikes. That is equal to the wavelength times the frequency, right? Uh, rearrange that and uh, divide both sides by frequency once again. And I end up with lambda. Right, or the wavelength, oops. The wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. Right. I know what both of those are. Of course, the speed of light is 300 million. Right. 
characters per second. And the frequency we just found up here, right, in hertz, right? Um, I could say it is, I could either write, write that out as one thing, uh, or I could do it in scientific notation, right? Um, in this case, let's go ahead and I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and convert these both to scientific notation. So I'm going to add this, I'm going to say three times 10 to the eighth power meters per second is the speed of light. And down here, I'm going to say I have my 2.44 uh, times 10 to the ninth hertz. Okay, which is what I had up there, just moving that decimal place over. Uh, so looking at this here, pretty straightforward. Uh, I have the front numbers I just treat like normal. 3 divided by 2.44 gives me 1.23. One point two three times ten to the well. What do I end up getting here? Um, ten to the eight uh, dividing. So eight minus nine is is ten to the negative one power, right? So uh, what does that end up meaning? Oh, and what what are my units end up being here? My units in this case would be wavelength. I'm looking at meters. Okay, well, ten to the negative one. That means that I'm going to move this over one. So what this is actually going to be is it's going to be 0 0.123 meters. Okay. Now, another way to write that, right, would be to say this is 12.3 uh, centimeters. Uh, and that's actually kind of a nice thing to visualize if you guys can't picture like a centimeter being like a little tiny thing like that. So 12.3 of those, that's something something like that in there, right? So does this make sense uh, with what we know about microwaves? Yeah, they're about like the size of a baseball is, is like a variation. The ones that are in a microwave should be about the size of a baseball, right? So that kind of makes sense with our calculations. So hopefully you guys got that one right. Hopefully you guys feel pretty comfortable about these. Uh, one thing to keep in mind as, as you're using these, you're more than welcome to use your calculator. Uh, make sure that you're being careful with your order of operations. You can always put things in parentheses, right, as, as you're dividing. Uh, for sure, when you're working in scientific notation, you want these to be in parentheses so that it, it'll kind of calculate correctly. Uh, and you guys are more than welcome to use your calculators to do that, as opposed to the method that I did. Um, but you can also use the method that I did. Uh, you can write uh, the numbers out. You don't even have to use scientific notation. You can write them all out. It just seems like a lot more work uh, to me personally. So um, good luck with all these. Uh, like I said, the answers I'll be going over next class. And I hope it's not too much work for you guys. Reach out if, if you're really struggling, if there's too much uh, with any commentary, anything that you guys would like to see, anything you guys would like changed, uh, let me know. I'll see you guys later.